What I mean to say is acceptance of this as well. This gives you, that is your faith in God. And faith in God has power. Faith in God has tremendous power. Because times will come in your life where none of your resources will work for the outcome of the, or for bringing you out of the problem. You will have 500, 100,000 numbers in you. My time is exactly over. I just take two minutes more. You have 100 numbers, you have 200 numbers, nothing will work. Whom to call? There will be a problem. At that time, your faith will work. That God has designed me. I'm working faithfully. I'm living faithfully and honestly. Things should work my way in some or the other way. That faith will help. I have read more than 500 biographies and autobiographies in my life, from Nath Mahatma Gandhi, Sardar Patel, to Abraham Lincoln, Winston Churchill, Adolf Hitler, Sachin Tendulkar, everybody. The one common element that I found in them, they all had setbacks, failures in their lives. They all experienced it, they all faced it. But during those times when there were negativities in their life, they stood up again because of this one factor, that was the factor of faith, yes, I accept what has happened to me. Now from tomorrow I'll go to get back on my knees to my resources with prayers. I will move. And they moved ahead. Gandhiji used to say that in the midst of all the hectic activities that I do, the one element that keeps me stable and peaceful is my regular prayers to God. So now even the top management gurus, top social relationship gurus, top health gurus of the world that teach you connection with your creator through prayers or chanting the holy name every day. Stephen Covey teaches in his seventh habit. Og Mandino teaches us in his book, The Greatest Salesman of the World. Ken Blanchard teaches in his book. Jim Collins teaches in his book. Connect with your creator through prayers every day or meditation or chanting the holy name. Recently, the University of Columbia, they carried out an experiment, absolutely scientific experiment, by psycho neuro softwares, they had mind mapping and MRIs of more than 4,000 people chanting the holy name for 12 minutes for eight weeks. Again, soft, again the psycho neuro software version 2.0. Their mind mapping and MRI is done, and they came to a conclusion that by chanting the holy name of God for 12 minutes every day, the MRI and the mind mapping, that is the secretion of the hormones during your moods or during your thought processes. They charted it out and they came to a conclusion, you can read it on the website of University of Columbia, University of Philadelphia as well, that chanting the holy name of God gives you 15 to 23 percent increase in your memory power, gives you about around about 15 percent increase in your confidence and willpower, gives around 15 to 17 percent increase in your buffer capacity, that is the capacity to absorb, uh, to absorb shocks of life, Another 15 to 17%, 20% increase in the strength of your immune system. So by chanting the holy name of God, you have increased in your memory power, in your willpower, in your confidence, in your buffer capacity, in your strength of immune system. Muft ka danda bina investment ka karna chahi ki nahi karna chahi Jo karte unko danyavad, jo nahi karte ho shuru karna kal sahi experimentally proved hai. I have such 500 experiment copies with me. Scientifically proved that this helps. It helps a lot. Every aspect of spirituality helps a lot. Who got the Nobel Prize for medicine this time? Dr. Honjo and Dr. Alison, what did they prove? That human body is capable of protecting itself from cancer. The T cells in the WBC, the white blood cells, each T cell has the power to kill 1,000 cancerous cells. But we, with our wrong food habits, sleeping habits, waking up other habits, we have suppressed the power of these T cells. And you know how this power comes back to you. Now the new therapy in cancer. We used to have thera radiotherapy, we used to have chemotherapy, and then we have the surgery. Now the new is immunotherapy. Now the new is immunotherapy. Where you make strong your immune system. That is the T cells power. Each T cell has the power to kill 1,000 cells, cancerous cells. And you know, they said by experiments, Dr. Honjo and Dr. Allison, the 2018 Nobel Prize for Medicine, they said that if you do a waterless fast twice a month, that is every 15 days, your T cells will come back to your original power. That is what we call Ikadashi, Nirjalupas. 
every aspect of spirituality has a physical mental and emotional impact on you and then he diluted the final result he said if you can't go waterless for 24 hours at least 20 days in a week you can go on google and search what i'm talking at least 20 days in a year 20 days in a year if you can go for 10 hours waterless not while you are sleeping okay at night <laughs> when you are awake when the sun is on top of you and we are you are in the midst of some activity those 10 hours if you go waterless at least 20 days in a year both these doctors have proved that the immunotherapy will work your immune system will be so strong your t cells will come back to its original power and there are least and least chances of your body getting affected by cancer every aspect of spirituality is right so keep faith in scriptures keep faith in the sayings of great saints keep faith in culture tradition values ethics that is work-life balance so in short honest ethical hard work second is a uh, get back to your family and health on time and third is your absolute faith in values virtues ethics and god and the existence and the doership of god that is a good work-life balance and when it comes to that we can definitely live a wonderful life so all my prayers for all of you thank you for calling me here and thank you for patiently hearing me and i shot my time for about seven minutes about one hour i apologize for that and I wish all you, Geo family, a wonderful career here at this place under the able guidance of such leaders. And I wish that when everything is Geo, you have Geo, and I, also, I saw the Geo merchant as well in the experience room. So perhaps days are not far enough when you will have Geo air, where you will breathe fresh air because of Geo, Geo filters. I was talking to Tucker Saib that the only one thing remaining. I was talking to Thakkar sir that only one thing remaining in your portfolio so I told him in the midst of all friends that I am giving you a project. He gives you project, I have given him a project now. <laughs> Just casually sharing as a friend, as a, as a well-wisher more than that. That someday you would put geo filters all over the surface of the earth and people will breathe fresh good oxygen air in the midst of all this pollution is because of geo filters. I don't know if that could happen in the near future. But all my best that you carry humanity to these standards and you carry the society and the human beings to this level of existence. All my prayers for all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Swamiji. We do have a Q&A session and we would really like you to answer some of our questions. Very quickly. So, very quickly, very quickly. Yeah, very quickly, okay. So, we have, uh, we circulated this and we got about 43 questions, but we have shortlisted five of them. Okay, I was just about to say 4.3. <laughs> so that is five. First question, and uh, I'm not naming the name of the employee, neither the code nor the contact number, but the employee is obviously in the room and you will appreciate, this is one of your questions. How to control negative thoughts coming into the mind and living fearlessly a stress-free life? I will talk absolute practical, not theoretical. When you wake up in the morning, decide five sentences, positive sentences in your life. Today night, before you go to sleep, you decide, write it down. For example, one sentence. Today, I will work ethically right. Two, today I'm going to do one small new thing at my workplace. Three, Today, I'm going to help somebody selflessly. Such five thoughts that are close to your hearts, write it down in one sentence, repeat those five sentences 25 times before you get out of the bed, and negativity will not come near to you, I challenge and guarantee. Thank you, Swamiji. And you will live a stress-free life. Tell yourself in the morning, I can do it, I will do it, because if somebody upon this earth can do it, I can do it, I will do it, I must do it. Tell yourself 25 times and you will be rejuvenated, basically into power. In soul, God has put tremendous amount of energy in our soul. You need to revive it. Next. Thank you, Swamiji. In this uncertain world, how do you develop the art of tolerance to in ambiguity? This, in this, again, sorry, in this? Uncertain world. Uncertain world. How do you develop the art of tolerance to ambiguity? Okay. For developing tolerance, first you are to understand human nature. And the nature of especially the people in and around you with whom you have to deal regularly in and out. 
In that first is acceptance that no human being is perfect. My spouse is not perfect, my child is not perfect, my working colleague is not perfect, nobody is perfect. It is a group of people with small fraction of perfections, on a small fraction of imperfections, coming together, working together and producing a result. It is not that that we count upon the positives of everybody around us. How we deal well with the negatives of people around us, that is our tolerance. So for that, acceptance of the weaknesses of people around you. Accept them gracefully, accept them whole. I tell, life is a package deal. You get packages, life is a package deal. And in any package, any employee of this world, only 70% is liked by him, 30% he doesn't like. 30% of the package he doesn't like. Only 70% he likes. But to get that 70% he has to accept the 30%. As simple as that. That is called acceptance and tolerance. So in one line it is, accept the weaknesses or negatives of the people whom you are related to, whom you are working with. Acceptance will give you a level of tolerance. Thank you, Swamiji. The next question has Sanskrit words and I you know, hope I pronounce it right. What is the difference between Deha Bhav and Atma Bhav? What is the difference between Atma and Paramatma? And what is the difference between Dvaita and Advaita? Somebody deep into spirituality has asked this. <laughs> and I appreciate first I must give, it, give them a big hand. The answer requires minimum one hour, but I will take just one, one minute. The first difference, basic difference between Deh Bhav and Atma Bhav. Now it is, the scriptures used to say, and now even the science says that the human body and the soul are two different things. Because you are sitting here, after one minute if you die, the body, the clothes, your eyes, hands, legs, all they remain the same. And something has gone out of you, which cannot be measured, which cannot be weighed. And that is your soul. So the first thing, two are different. To know that two are, that two are different is the start of the Atma Bhav. Debhav is your attraction towards materialistic pleasures of your life. Atma Bhav is to know their right concepts, put them right in place in your life, and don't get tempted or attracted towards materialistic pleasures of life. I don't say that you don't have, and you must not have. Have the best house, have the best car, because it is your work, it is a human dignity. If you are like fond of good clothes, if you have 50 pairs of clothes, 100 clothes of fine, fine, okay. I'm not against it. To have materialistic possessions or to enjoy materialistic pleasures, I'm not against it. If you, if you enjoy a good trip abroad every year, fine, go with your family, enjoy with your friends. What I mean to say is don't get infatuated, don't get tempted, and don't get attracted towards it. That is the line of discipline. If you maintain, then you are into the Atma Bhav section from the Deva. If you cannot maintain that line of discipline, you're in the Deva. Second is the difference between Atma and Paramatma, that is we are the souls, we are called the Atma, and Paramatma is God. There is a big difference between the two. We are in millions and in billions, he is only one. In short, there is a big difference, there is a major difference, but then the other differences do come. He controls all the billions of us, and none of us at all, in any stage of life or thereafter, can be equivalent to him can be equivalent to him. He is the only one from time eternal to time inter eternal thereafter. So he is the only one. And the third question is between Dvait and Advait. That is we feel these are the two schools of philosophy. Dvait, Advait, Vizista Dvait, Dvaita Dvait. These are all the schools of philosophy. And the basic one line difference is that Dvait means they say that Atma and Paramatma are two different entities and Advait says that the Atma and Paramatma are not two separate. When this body is left over by the Atma, that is when the Atma leaves this body, it aligns itself with the Paramatma. It gets lost in the Paramatma, that is Advait. No two. Advait means no two, only one. And Dvait is even after the soul leaves this body, it still has an independent existence. That is Dvait philosophy. The two different schools of philosophy. Thank you, Swamiji. The next question is, how should a disciple continue his steadfastness and worship the Almighty when the Guru fails him? When the? The Guru fails him. 
This is in light of many gurus who have fellowships but fail to maintain the sacred platform they were placed on and now are spending their lives behind bars. Yes, definitely. As I said first thing, in any, in any profession of your life or at any stage in your life, if you miss out on ethics, whether you are a householder or you are a saint, if you miss out on that, you will face the consequences. In any profession, anywhere in the world, there are always 5-10% people who would join the profession for their own personal interests. Let me ask you a question regarding this. I'm talking of the first officially recorded kidnap case of this world when Ramana lifted Sita. The first official kidnap recorded. Now my question to you is, listen carefully. The person who kidnapped Sita ji in the Ramayana, was he a demon or a sadhu? Feel free to speak out. Was he a demon, the person who lifted Sita, kidnapped Sita, was he a demon or a sadhu? <laughs> demon in the avatar of a sadhu. He was a demon, but he wore these clothes. From that day, people came to know that these are the best clothes to cheat the society. <laughs> From that day, from that day, people came to know that these are the best clothes to cheat the society, and people are doing it. Sometimes people committing triple murders in some state, they come to Gujarat and they make a salt shrine somewhere and they start worshipping it as a pujari and they sit back. And see, blessings are such things that if you bless 100 people a day, 10 of them are going to come out right. You are not concerned about the rest 90. <laughs> मेरे पास सॉल होगा ये सब कुछ चल तेरा धंधा अच्छा चलेगा तेरी तुझे नौकरी मिल जाएगी तेरे तुझे पैसा मिल जाएगा तेरे भाई के साथ जो झगड़ा है वो निपट जाएगा तू तेरे तेरे संतान नहीं है 15 साल शादी हुई संतान नहीं संतान हो जाए ऐसे सौ आशीर्वाद में दूं तो 10 तो वैसे भी फलने वाले वो तो आपसे भी होता है मतलब क्या दोस 90 टू हूम आई ब्लेस्ड एंड इट डिड नॉट इनकार्नेट I'm not concerned with them. This 10 will become my disciples. This 10 will tell their stories to another 10 people. Are yaar, 15 saal se santa nahi hote the shaadi ke baad. Inki aashirwad se ho gaye. Chal, main le jata hoon. This is how it works. Now, coming to the point. That if your guru fails you, how can you maintain your steadfastness? Before selection of your guru, before you started your job at Jio, before you accepted the appointment letter here at your place. You had certain basic thoughts in your mind about salary, about working hours, about the profile, about the table, everything. So before accepting a guru in your life, if at all you wanted to have a five paisa partnership with somebody, you would check 10 parameters. In the same way, when you listen to a saint or you put your head at his feet, check 10 parameters in him. If you don't check and just go by blind faith, there are chances that you will be betrayed by your guru. Because they were originally demons in the form of sadhu incarnate. Simple. They had decided to wear this to cheat the society. So there are parameters you check. The first parameter to check a saint is that he should be following eightfold celibacy. Uske jeevan mein dhan ka sampoorna tyag hona chahiye. उसके जीवन में अष्टांग ब्रह्मचर्य होना चाहिए अगर कोई साधु सेफ्रन क्लैड हो व्हाइट क्लैड हो ब्लैक क्लैड हो येलो क्लैड हो जो भी क्लैड हो इफ ही टच इज मनी एंड कीप्स मनी हैज अ बैंक अकाउंट ही इज नॉट अ त्यागी इफ ही ओन्स द स्लाइटेस्ट ऑफ लैंड वन स्क्वायर इच ऑफ लैंड इन हिज पोजेशन बाय हिज नेम ही इज नॉट अ त्यागी वी इन बीएपीएस वी ऑल साइंस वी डोंट हैव बैंक अकाउंट्स वी डोंट टच मनी वी डोंट कीप मनी I have been talking since 26 years on national and international platforms. I don't charge a single rupee for my talks. <laughs> Never. This is my selfless service to society. Second thing is this. He should have Astang Brahmacharya, celibacy in his life. 
if after becoming a tyagi that is a saint if he maintains any kind of relationship with the other gender there are chances of all spoils in life jo hum dekhte hain jo mukhya karan hai behind bars jane ke mukhya karan yahi because at your workplace now you have to maintain man women relationship dignity at your workplace also we all believe in a free society i also believe i am also a man of science i did my engineering way back in 1991 i could see many young faces here before you people were born i finished my engineering in 1991 i think half of you were born after that i am also a man of science i am i believe that there is a free world everybody has a chance to and everybody has the right to all the resources so man and women should get literate together they must they have all the rights to get fully educated man and women must work together they can come together make good teams together pull in their resources and come out with wonderful projects and work but you have to maintain your dignity you have to maintain your discipline when it comes to relationships even at your workplace i tell to corporates that a single simple handshake can prove dangerous after 6 months and that is the me too movement <laughs> a simple oh we are forward we are cultured we are living in the 21st century and you know this is a free world and this simple handshake with this thought process can prove dangerous after 6 months from a cabinet minister to a ceo of a giant e-commerce platform in bengaluru everybody had to put in their papers this is just the tip of the iceberg ye me too movement and tip of the iceberg hai isliye main kehna ye chahta hu ki discipline aapko bhi chahiye to hum to hum to samaj ko sahi raste pe dorne wale hain to humko to zyada discipline chahiye to ye me too movement ye hai wah discipline thodi bhi todi 10 saal pehle 20 saal pehle 40 saal pehle bahar aati hai na ये तो जिनके नाम बहुत बड़े उनके नाम न्यूज़पेपर में आते हैं एक बड़े नाम के पीछे दस पंद्रह नाम तो ऐसे ही चले जाते हैं हाँ ये मी टू मूवमेंट में और ये मी टू मूवमेंट स्टार्ट हुआ उसके बाद मैंने बोलना चालू किया इसके बारे में इन माय पब्लिक स्पीचेस आई हैव पुट एन वर्जन टू इट आफ्टर अ फ्यू ईयर्स आर जनरेशन विल सी द सी टू मूवमेंट वो क्या है मैं आपको समझाऊ आपने किसी के सामने देखा और वो व्यक्ति ने फरियाद की कि ये जरा दृष्टि बुरी थी तो वो तो कैसे प्रूव हो सकती है एनीथिंग दैट इज नॉट प्रूव लीगली द पर्सन कैन नॉट बी पनिश्ड लेकिन सब सीसीटीवी कैमरा तो सब जगह पे पब्लिक प्लेसेस पे है टुडे लंदन टुडे लंदन इज द ओनली सिटी इन द वर्ल्ड व्हिच वेयर एवरी स्क्वायर सेंटीमीटर ऑफ पब्लिक प्लेस इज अंडर सीसीटीवी ऑल द सिटीज विल फॉलो हो जाएगी 10 15 25 साल में सब सिटीज द टॉप 250 सिटीज ऑफ द वर्ल्ड विल बी अंडर सीसीटीवी एवरी स्क्वायर इंच तो वो व्यक्ति ने फरियाद की कि ये बुरी दृष्टि से मेरे सामने देखा टीवी में तो आपके देखना तो आ गया भी देखते थे उसके सामने ठीक है ऐसे ही देख लिया बट देन दिस आई टी पीपल विल मेक ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फाइव काइंड ऑफ सॉफ्टवेयर विच वेन अप्लाइड ऑन दिस सीसीटीवी नजर पता चल जाए कि ये दृष्टि बुरी थी आई टी पीपल विल डू एनी थिंग अपॉन दिस अर्थ यू यू जस्ट कैंट इमेजिन वॉट दे विल डू they can do anything upon this sir so they will make such softwares ki ye 20 25 softwares laga diye is cctv camera ki bhi ye frame pe jo frame thi that will come out with a big red line bahut buri drashti thi <laughs> the software will generate the output aur aapko jail hogi ye bhi aayega to main kya bolna chahta hu ki aapke working colleague ke sath ya social colleague ke sath bhi disciplines बहुत जरूरी है फिजिकल मेंटल इमोशनल तो आपको जरूरी है तो संत को तो उससे ज्यादा जरूरत है बिकॉज दे आर द प्योरिफिकेशन सिस्टम ऑफ द सोसाइटी इफ दे आर नॉट हंड्रेड परसेंट इन देयर कैरेक्टर व्हाट आर दे गोइंग टू गिव द पीपल इफ आई एम नॉट हंड्रेड परसेंट प्योर फ्रॉम विद इन माय वर्ड्स विल नॉट इफेक्ट यू प्रमुख स्वामी महाराज प्रमुख स्वामी महाराज वॉज जस्ट फिफ्थ स्टैंडर्ड पास बट यू वॉज सो प्योर फ्रॉम विद इन and that purity of his heart created this huge baps organization 
एक बार किसी को बात करते थे व्यसन छूट जाता था एक बार किसी को प्रमुख महाराज बात करते थे कोई कुदा कुआदत छूट जाती थी क्यों दैट द पावर द पावर ऑफ कैरेक्टर फ्रॉम विद इन ट्रमेंडस पावर आई विल टेक जस्ट वन मिनट मोर फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन Winston Churchill the wartime prime minister of UK who gave this symbol V for victory in the World War 2 when Hitler had sent 300 warplanes on London carpet bombing on London whole of London was on fire at that time to bring back the spirits of the britishers he gave this symbol V for victory and the people responded to it well such a powerful prime minister but he used to say that i can kill 100 hitlers but i am afraid of that half naked fakir of india that is gandhi he used to tell in the convocation day of the ics officers who are now ias the ics indian civil services that now you will go in india because the age of 25 28 there were ics officers coming to india as heads of provinces a governor sitting in mumbai would control mumbai and whole of gujarat 25 year old boy is now the provincial governor in the british empire tremendous power or execution power that he held he churchill used to tell this young dynamic personalities that now you are going to india you will be sitting as governors in powerful positions in big huge provinces you can do anything you want but don't do one thing and they would say what and churchill used to tell them don't talk to gandhi and sardar <laughs> why and they would say why and churchill used to say that these two people are such pure in their character they live such a high ethical life that in a 10 minute conversation with them across the table they will throw a blank paper on your face and command you to sign it you will sign a blank paper they will write the text after that <laughs> character has this power and that we saw when sardar patel passed away he had only 725 rupees in his bank account being the deputy prime minister and the union home minister of the country of india just 725 rupees so a 22 crore statue of unity of his aise nahi bante aise bade statue aise nahi bante koi film star ka nahi banta koi politician ka nahi banta real statesman ka bante hain jo character jiske jeevan mein hota hai just 725 rupees in bank account so a 2200 crore statue directly the character has tremendous power प्रमुख साई महाराज का यह कैरेक्टर था अक्षरधाम खड़ा किया ऐसे चार बड़े बड़े अक्षरधाम हो रहे हैं इतने संत हम उनके पास आएगी हमारे पचपन हजार का वॉलेंटियर फोर्स है ये सब कैसे आता है कैरेक्टर हैज द पावर टू पुल ऑल रिसोर्सेस फॉर योर हेल्थ टेक दिस सेंटेंस विथ यू सो जब आप कोई संत के पास जाते हो गुरु के पास जाते हो तो उसका कैरेक्टर चेक कर रहा ज्ञान चेक मत कर रहा मैंने अभी एक घंटा आपको पास बोला इज नॉट पार इज जस्ट ज्ञान टीचर हैं बोलते हैं कोई टीचर फिजिक्स का लेक्चर एक घंटा ले लेते हैं मैंने वर्क बैलेंस कर ले लिया यू हैव टू चेक माय कैरेक्टर ओनली फैम प्योर इन कैरेक्टर कैरेक्टर ये दो ही बात संत के लिए धन और स्त्री इनके साथ वो कैसे निपटता है वही साधु रेस्ट आर ऑल डेमंस इनकारनेट इन टू साधु नेक्स्ट फाइनल क्वेश्चन फॉर टूडे स्वामी जी The question is I am totally unclear as to what is my ultimate goal in life my question is what are the essentials of reaching a phase of clarity okay pramukh swami maharaj was asked this question by an ias aspirant that at the end of life death is certain then what is the aim of human life pramukh swami maharaj out of all his wisdom and out of all his experience of traveling all over the world and meeting so many people and out of his nectar experience the wisdom of the great sages in the scriptures he said the purpose of human life is five things the goal of life ye panch goals hai jeevan ke manushya jeevan ke ye panch goal hai ye pramukh swami maharaj ji apne anubhav se bataye it is according to the scriptures according to all the great personalities upon this earth thinking repeatedly of this five things will give you the clarity of it first thing sabse pehli baat goal of life first goal of life aapki jo sansarik jawabdariyan hain wo aap barabar nibhaye as a father as a brother as a son as a sister as a wife as a daughter as a neighbor as a relative jo bhi aapki sansarik jawabdariyan hain wo barobar ekdam barabar aap nibhaye that is your first goal 
टोटल फाइव गोल्स फर्स्ट गोल इज दिस सेकेंड आपका जीवन निर्व्यसनी और पवित्र रखे फ्रॉम डी एडिक्शन टू कैरेक्टर आपका जीवन पवित्र हो शास्त्र के अनुसार वो आपका जीवन का दे तो आपको सुख रहेगा शांति रहेगी स्थिरता रहेगी थर्ड प्रमुख स्वामी महाराज बोले निस्वार्थ भाव से मदद और सेवा की भावना हमेशा रखना वॉट एवर यू कैन डू वेर एवर यू कैन डू सेल्फलेसली सम एक्टिविटी सम हेल्प सम सर्विस यू मस्ट डू इट दैट विल डिस्ट्रेस यू नाउ द डॉक्टर्स इन अमेरिका आर ऑफिशियली प्रिस्क्राइबिंग टू आवर्स ऑफ सेल्फलेस सर्विस अ वीक टू डिस्ट्रेस योर सेल्फ और उससे तो बैक पेन नी पेन सब चले जाते हैं ऐसे एग्जाम्पल्स हैं क्योंकि 90% परसेंट ऑफ योर डिजीज आर साइकोसोमेटिक मन अस्वस्थ है इसलिए शरीर में तकलीफ आती है मन स्वस्थ हुआ तो शरीर अच्छा तो थर्ड वर्स इज फोर्थ भगवान के प्रति श्रद्धा और भक्ति करना और फिफ्थ अपने आत्मा का कल्याण करना तो ये पांच बातें जीवन का मकसद गोल है इफ यू कैन स्पेंड ऑल योर कॉन्शियस टाइम इन टू दिस फाइव एस्पेक्ट ऑफ लाइफ ऑल द गोल्स आर वेल मेट इट इज अ वेल बैलेंस सक्सेसफुल लाइफ